back to the Library of Parthos. My name is Sarah. Today we're going to be talking about a murder mystery novel, and that is The Maidens by Alex Michaelidis. Um, I really loved this book, so much so that I finished it and gave it to my mom, and I was just going to keep, like, the cover so that I could film, and then was like, wait. I need to reread that ending, so I took it back. So she will get to read it after I'm done with this video. Um, but the ending was wild. Um, so quick overview of the story, and then I'll get into spoilers. So of course, if you don't want the end to be ruined for you, you can just skip to the end of the video. If you've already read it or you're okay with the spoilers, then feel free to keep watching. Um, so the story begins with a woman named Mariana. Um, she is recently widowed, struggling to get over the death of her husband. And in the midst of her trying to move on, um, somebody at the college that her niece attends has been murdered. So she goes to initially comfort her niece and um, try to help her get over the death of a friend and ends up getting involved in trying to solve the mystery. And of course, as I said, the ending just blew my mind. Um, so getting into the spoilers. Um, so first of all, and I, I don't know, maybe this is just me, because I feel like I've had this issue recently with a few books. I get that she lost her husband recently and she's struggling with that. Um, but it's like mentioned after everything that she says or thinks or sees, like it's just mentioned so much. I get it. Can we please move on to what's happening in the story? So that's really my only criticism of this book, um, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. I just kind of skimmed those parts, if I'm being honest, and, uh, kind of checked back in to the story whenever things started picking up again. Okay, so getting to the end. First of all, let me just say, unless I was just reading through this super fast and not paying attention to anything, I was completely caught off guard by the end. I had absolutely no idea how this was going to be resolved, and I was shocked. Like, read the first sentence where it started to be explained, and then I was like, what? And started it over, like went back a few pages. As I said, I've reread the ending. Um, so let me kind of start to get into that a little bit. So um, Mariana goes through an explanation of her relationship with her late husband about how it was basically love at first sight. They were madly in love. Some of the challenges that they had to overcome, for example, her father didn't want them to get married, but then they did anyway. Um, and some of the complexities of their family relationships. Mariana's mother passed away when she was very young, I believe. Um, her father passed away when she was an adult, and her sister and her sister's husband were killed in a car accident, leaving um, their niece Zoe, who ends up um, going to boarding school in England and staying with Mariana and Sebastian when she's not in boarding school. So she becomes like a daughter to them at some point. So throughout the story you get you get all of that information. Um, now my mom and I have watched like BBC, um, PBS like murder mystery, like British murder mysteries for the longest time. So I love the aesthetic of this, like being on a college campus. It reminded me of like uh, Inspector Lewis was like one of my favorites. So it gave, it reminded me of that a lot. Um, but they make it pretty clear who the murderer is right away. Like every single piece of evidence points to this one person, Professor Edward Fosca. It all points to him extremely clearly and he doesn't seem at all concerned that all of the evidence is pointing to him. Um, so at one point in the story I was like, if it ends up being him that's going to be like really disappointing because there's no, there's really no mystery, it's just him. Um, and the reason it points to him is because he is very much into like Greek mythology, Greek tragedy. He had this special group of girls called the Maidens that he um, at some point like basically like drugged and did some not great things with. Um, so like it seemed like it was very possibly him and the way that the first girl was murdered um, 
followed some line in like a Greek tragedy and she was found with a pine cone in her hand I believe um, which he explained to be some sort of symbol he had a pine cone in his house I think um, so like it very obviously pointed to him two other girls I believe were ended ended up getting murdered as well in the exact same way um, so Mariana suspects Edward Fosca pretty early on um, and he's just one of those like creepy kind of guys he gives off bad vibes um, and she notices that of course she also meets uh, a man who's a bit younger than she is named Fred he's I think he's a grad student at another local college um, and he comes on pretty strongly like he meets her on the train and says he has a premonition that he's going to propose to her at some point um, so they develop a friendship but she's still kind of kind of creeped out by how like positive he is that she's going to they're gonna get married at some point um so he i kind of suspected him as well now the author does kind of give you some additional clues from the mind of the killer um so there's a chapter like every few chapters that is the killer kind of describing their early childhood how their father was abusive they lived on a farm where they like butchered sheep um their mother got beaten so he would step in and try to protect his mother but his mother wouldn't protect him um and so you know all of the things that happen to make one an incredibly callous person and potentially a serial killer um and edward fosca the professor grew up on a sheep farm. He mentioned that. I think Fred mentioned it too at one point, so I was like, okay, it could be either one of these guys. Now, getting to the end of the story. So as Mariana's trying to comfort her niece, Zoe, she's trying to get more information out about the maidens and about Edward Fosca to see if she can use that to try to help figure out what's going on. Zoe seems like pretty reluctant to talk about it. You find out that she did go to one of the meetings, one of the gatherings of the maidens, um, and was given drugs and other things. Um, and so it it's made pretty clear that that's why she's kind of been uncomfortable to talk about some of the things. Um, but as Mariana is getting um, Zoe packed up, because they're going to go to London for a little bit just to kind of take a little breather, um, in a stuffed animal that she's had for a really long time, she finds some of the stitching is kind of new or like ripped. Um, and she pulls out a letter that was written to Zoe and it talks about like how whoever wrote it, how much they love Zoe, how they can finally be together once this plan is put into place, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then Zoe walks into the room and <sighs> here was the surprise. So Zoe sees Mariana reading this letter and it is that point that it is made known that Zoe was the killer, not Edward Fosca, not Fred, like I was starting to think. It was Zoe and because this was the part that I was like because she Sebastian was in love with her. He was set up this elaborate plan to uh, somehow, I think through the killing of the maidens, he, Mariana was gonna get killed as well. They were gonna frame Edward Fosca and then those two, Zoe and Sebastian, would be in the clear to be together. Um, and that's why I was like, did I miss something? Like, at no point was there any evidence of this. Again, unless I missed it, which is very, very possible. Um, so like if you read it and you figured that out, please let me know what led you to that because I was astonished. Um, first of all, Sebastian is quite a bit older than Zoe. It may have started off when she was a child as a very abusive relationship. Um, and I think she just kind of twisted it to be more romantic than what it was. Um, and I, th I think she said it, it definitely started when she was 15, if not earlier. So. Um, she words it, like I said, very romantically. She is later referred for treatment, um, and one of the therapists that is working with her does tell Mariana that some very disturbing things have been, um, coming out as they're talking, and she is very lucky 
to be alive, having lived with both Zoe and Sebastian who were forming this plan. Um, so I was just so blown away by the end. Um, at this point, Mariana finally kind of has the closure that she needs to start moving on. Obviously, she was wrong about her relationship with Sebastian, so she no longer feels like she um, is missing a part of herself, so that helps her move on a little bit. Um, I don't know if there are any plans for there to be a sequel of this book. I kind of wish there were, because <laughs> I'm interested to see what's going to happen next. Or maybe even a prequel to kind of see some of that, um, some of Sebastian's thoughts. Though we do get those in the, the chapters that are written from his perspective of his childhood. Um, but I was definitely surprised by the end, which I appreciate because it doesn't always happen. So I highly recommend this book if you are into murder mysteries, thrillers, um, particularly if you enjoy uh, British <laughs> stories like I do that take place in like the quintessential college towns. Um, so I definitely recommend this if that is something you're interested in. It was a great fall read. Um, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Bye! <laughs>